Yeah. I choose characters with depth. You know, so if I play a bad guy, you know, I play someone that has a little bit of spectrum to him, a little bit of depth, because it's quite easy just to say you're black and you're bad, right? Yeah. Uh, and I ain't about that. Be who I've had to be, not just like My beautiful melanin goddess that's before me. Hello. On this episode of Another Act, I sit down with Idris Elba to talk about why he loves playing the bad guy, his new Netflix spaghetti western, and on the evolution of his music career. Nice to see you today. Nice to see you too, Kelly. Yeah, it has been a while. It's been a really long time, but I really enjoyed watching the climb of your career in the years since we first met. Did you have a particular strategy when you thought about mapping out what you wanted your career to do in the last, let's say, 10 years? What What was that strategy like for you? You, you know, it's, 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 it's a bit of a, it's like putting a boat on the sea. You have a strategy to get from A to B, but the sea offers, <laughs> offers you very many alternatives to think about. So as much as I had a strategy, which really was about success, you know, I want to be somewhere. I want to, you know, I want to be a contributor to my culture as an actor. I want to be uh, uh, competitive. I wanted to, you know, build and grow a, a production company and a music arm to my career. That strategy was, you know, you know, a candle in the wind, you know, uh, because so many different things have happened that move you from one to the other. But if I'm honest, you know, um, I, I, where I'm at at the moment, whether regardless of the strategy that I put in place 10 years ago, I couldn't have asked for a better footing yeah. in my career. Um, and, and, and not everything's gone well, you know. <laughs> People assume that, you know, People who are successful or seemingly successful have no issues. But the last 10 years have not been an easy stride for me, but I have certainly done one thing, and this is always true, is if you work hard, that work, that hard, the hard work will always come to the top. It doesn't matter. Even if you have a really bad time, yeah. as long as you're working hard, then it will come to rise to the top. I love that. You know, now that you are complete leading man status what types of things do you look for at this point in your career what has to be put in front of you to say you know what i think that's something that i want to do this time you know for me it's more about diversity you know what i mean like i i can't do the same thing uh and over and over again you know a lot of people love to see me play bad guys gangsters or whatever you know what i mean and i love playing them too Hoping. I like to spread my wings a little bit. I, I think it's important as an actor to show a spectrum of, of roles. You're an actor, all right? So you're supposed to be able to do everything. Um, you know, if you're an R&B singer, people expect R&B, right? But actually, if you decided to sing a country and Western song, it's not that your voice can't do it, it's just that people won't expect it. As an actor, I think people should expect a plethora of roles and not just expect you to play the same role. Yeah. Now let's stick with that bad guy thing, because you're right. I think people really love seeing you play a baddie. I'm going to say probably ever since Stringer Bell. And, and you do play these bad guys so well. What is it about those types of characters with a little bit of darkness that you find attractive? Typically, it's the writing. You know, I mean, the writing's always better, I think. Uh, or I shouldn't say better, just a little bit more thought out. You know, you have to layer someone who's a bad guy, you know what I mean? You, you have to, you can't just make them a bad guy. You have to give them something as to yeah. why they, they are the way they are in the movie or in the story. So that's one of the attractions. I, I also, you know, look, the truth is, you know, I, I'm not a bad guy, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm a big gentle giant, if I'm honest, you know what I'm saying? And, but I, I do have a side growing up where I'm come from, where I was surrounded by characters and indeed myself, I've had to, be who I've had to be in order to survive in certain scenarios, okay? So, you know, I'm speaking between the lines here, but the truth is, you know, it's a side of me, it's a side of my upbringing, it's a side of who I am as a black man that I choose to represent in films as opposed to in real life. I choose to play characters that are quote unquote bad, but uh, I choose characters with depth. You know, so if I play a bad guy, you know, I play someone that has a little bit of spectrum to him, a little bit of depth, because 
it's quite easy just to say you're black and you're bad, right? Yeah. Uh, and I ain't about that, you know what I mean? So I feel like it's it's important that if I'm going to do that and people like to see me doing that, that's great, but it has to have something to it. Yeah, which of course brings us to the harder they fall. Talk about depth. You know, obviously we're not going to give away what happens in the story, but but that character is very, very layered. Tell me a little bit about this guy. Obviously, he was real. The story that we're going to see in this film didn't necessarily, you know, happen, but the characters are real. But tell me about this character because my God, depth layers all of the things yeah you know this this is a really interesting character you know from from a screen time point of view he does not have the most real estate in this film but in terms of depth and intention you know it's a character that's really well thought out and actually becomes the aha moment of the film i heard rufus buck was back a new day is dawning you know that was really attractive to me and also you know james samuels as a director had really again you know he and i really think about these things quite deeply you know if we're gonna make a gangster record we're gonna make a gangster film like mm. what are we saying it's you can't just be like Meh. you know what i mean and and i i I think that that was a real draw to me in, in approaching this character. I think that audiences might not gravitate to my character in an in the obvious way. Yeah. He is the, the, the antagonist, but at the end of the film, people go, oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh. Yes. And that's, that's really fulfilling and satisfying for us. I was going to say that has to feel really satisfying. Well, look, you your name is is attached to so many other projects that we're really excited about. What can you tell us that you're working on that you have coming next as we look to the future of what Idris Elba is doing? Look, I'm really <clears throat> really excited about what the potential of Luther, my character that I've toted around for 10 years, you know. I love that character. He's very he's an interesting guy cuz he's essentially a good guy in, in encased in a bad guy exterior or the other way around, however you, however, you, however you see it. But what the opportunity is now is that we're making a film. Uh, again, I've partnered up with Netflix on this one and we're making a very robust Luther movie, which one that sort of will hopefully satisfy the audience that have stuck with it for 10 years but also now bring in a new audience because we have now a bigger landscape in which to explore this character, mm. you know? And, you know, I'm super excited about that because I love John Luther. And I think that the stories we can tell in a slightly bigger landscape is, you know, endless. Yeah. So that's really exciting to me, you know, it's a real franchise opportunity uh, it's a character that has depth and it's a character that's exhilarating and the landscape, good versus evil, you know, <laughs> that's a storytelling trope that will uh, always be there. And essentially, you know, I I'm excited about this coming to life. I'm excited about all the things coming to life. Quickly, tell me about music. What, what can we expect? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, um, I'm really excited about the journey I've had with music, okay? Yeah. A long time, you you know, you've known my you know, various dips and dabs into music, but suddenly over the last few years, I'm being recognized as a musician, as a DJ, as a producer, and I have a pigeonholed myself, you know what I mean? Like, I think people don't know what to expect and that's okay, you know? And there are people that I respect like Pharrell, like Andre 3000, like, you can I say FK Twigs that you just don't know what you might get you know what I mean they're they're a real instrument as an artist and so I, I'm hoping that I feel, I'm not I'm not in that category of artists or that caliber I'm not comparing myself but as an example of artists that haven't fit into a box I feel like that's where my music is going so I'm excited to put some new stuff out I've been you know I've been putting my film and music together more and more uh, and, that, and that feels really satisfying. 
I love it. And I can't wait to listen to it. Idris Elba, it is always great to check in with you. Thank you so much for doing this today. You're welcome. It's good to see you again. Thank you.